Sonic, the heart of your system. Alright guys, Dominic here for Kitgoo and today is the day that we can actually show you RTX 2070 performance. The thing is though, we're not looking at the Founders Edition card today, however, we have the MSI RTX 2070 Gaming Z, or perhaps Gaming Z if you are from the other side of the pond. So, because it's a new card, we're just going to quickly touch over the um, clock speed. This boosts to 1830 megahertz out of the box. So that is actually up from the 1710 megahertz of the Founders Edition. So that's quite a hefty factory overclock for the Gaming Z. And it has an MSRP of £605.99 here in the UK. We are going to look at the card a bit more detail later on though. For now, we're actually going to show you performance straight away as this is a new card. I'm sure that is what you are most interested in. So we are going to show you 1440p and 4K benchmarks. You can find 1080p benchmarks as well as our full testing methodology over on kitguru.net. But for now, here are the 1440p and 4K benchmarks. So now that we have the graphs up, starting with 3D Mark, Time Spy and Fire Strike Ultra, then moving on to our games, I think the first trend to show to you guys is that the RTX 2070 is very much a 1440p card. You can of course game at 4K using this, but you'll probably be around the 40 FPS mark depending on the game, so it might not be the smoothest gaming experience. At 1440p though, we saw all of our games average at least 65 FPS, and we even saw Far Cry 5 hitting almost 100 FPS on average, so that suggests to us that the RTX 2070 would be very well suited to a high refresh rate 1440p monitor. Now the second and perhaps the overriding trend of the performance is that the 2070 sits almost exactly in between the GTX 1080 and the 1080 Ti in terms of performance. This is best demonstrated by Far Cry 5 at 1440p where we saw the 2070 run 6 FPS faster than the 1080 but 6 FPS slower than the 1080 Ti. Speaking generally as well we can say across all of our games the 2070 performed on average 9% faster than a 1080 at 1440p and it was on average 13% faster than a 1080 at 4K. The GTX 1080 Ti, however, proved to be 11% faster on average, and that was at both 1440p and 4K resolutions. So that pretty much sums up the performance of the 2070 in a nutshell. As we said, it slots in between the 1080 and the 1080 Ti almost perfectly. This is obviously an RTX card though, so what about ray tracing? Well, we do now have DXR that was released with the latest update to Windows 10. Uh, we didn't even have DXR when we reviewed the 2080 and the 2080 Ti last month. However, while that means we can now take advantage of ray tracing in games, we are still waiting for games to actually support the technology and implement some patches. We are waiting for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for instance, to update, and then we should be able to test ray tracing in that game, although we still don't know when that's going to come. So we can't test the RTX 2070 with actual ray tracing in games. The next best thing is that Star Wars Reflections demo which Nvidia provided to press ahead of the 2080 and 2080 Ti launch. So we are going to show you a quick comparison of the 2070 and how it performs in that test. It's not a perfect comparison because the Turing cards do use DLSS as well, but for now here is a comparison of frame rates between the five different cards. So the first card we have running the ray tracing reflections demo is the GTX 1080 and you can already see frame rate is very low. Right now it's dipping into, it's between, it's roughly hovering between 8 to 10 FPS but we're seeing right now it dips to 6 and it's obviously not very smooth at all. The visual fidelity looks absolutely fantastic but clearly you can see the frame rate is really really suffering. There's so many reflections, all that ray tracing going on, look, dips down to 5 here in the elevator. So clearly the GTX 1080 is not up to this ray tracing demo. And so now we are showing the GTX 1080 Ti. It does look a bit faster straight away, but already we can see dips down to 8, 9 FPS. It's coming up to 10, 11, but again still is unable to deal with the ray tracing at 1440p. We're again there seeing dips down to just 8 FPS. Everything is very, very choppy. As they enter the elevator, let's see if we get any more dips. This is traditionally where it gets a bit tougher. Okay, we're going down to 8, 7, down, all the way down to 6 FPS. So again, that just shows GTX 90 Ti cannot handle the ray tracing either. And now we have moved on to the MSI RTX 2070 Gaming Z. So we can already see frame rate above 40 FPS. So it's dropping now down to around the 35 mark. So it's bouncing between 35 and 40 or so. 
Um, it'll be interesting to see when they head into the elevator. Traditionally, we get a little drop there when they walk in and the elevator starts to go down. But for now, around the 35 FPS mark seems to be about right. As they head into the elevator and we start heading down, just dipping below 30 FPS there. So still 29 looks to be the lowest we've seen so far. And that is again still much better than we've seen from the other Pascal cards running this ray tracing test. So now the RTX 2080 is installed and as you can see frame rate is already well above what we're getting with the GTX series. It's hovering around between 45 and 50, 50 FPS at the moment. It is dropping down just between 41, 43 there, but still much, much smoother than anything we were seeing with the GTX 1080 or 1080 Ti. And as they step into the elevator, let's just see if the FPS drops down. And okay, we hit 36, 37 there, but still much, much smoother than anything we saw with the previous Pascal card. So clearly on this demo, ray tracing is doing its thing. Okay, we now have the RTX 2080 Ti installed and straight away you can see FPS over 60. We're gonna see how that progresses. It's now down around the 55 to 60 range, but it's bouncing between 55 and 60. So clearly uh, better even than the RTX 2080 and loads better than the GTX 10 series. And now as they walk into the elevator, let's see how far it dips down. I'm guessing into the 40s perhaps, and 45 I think it flashed to there, 47, but still uh, much, much better than the GTX 10 series and better still than the RTX 2080. So from that demo, we can see the Turing cards do outperform Pascal, even the 2070 beats out the 1080 Ti, although as we mentioned, it's not quite an apples to apples comparison since the Turing cards were making use of DLSS as well. That being said, it still doesn't show us how the 2070 is actually going to hand real time ray tracing in games you can actually go out and play. As we mentioned, we're still waiting for games to implement ray tracing and we're hoping Shadow of the Tomb Raider will have it soon, but for now we still just can't tell you what ray tracing in games is actually going to be like. The same can be said for DLSS. We have been able to run the Final Fantasy XV demo comparing TAA with DLSS and you can clearly see that DLSS gives us on average a 36% bump in average frame rates, which is obviously hugely impressive, but again, we still haven't been able to test this in any games you can actually go out and play, so we can't really say what this is gonna be like when you actually have an RTX card in your system and you're trying to play the latest games that make use of RTX features. So like we said in our original view of the 2080, that does mean at the moment the RTX series may as well be called the GTX series because we just can't take advantage of those RTX features like ray tracing and DLSS. Moving on now to look at the MSI Gaming Z 2070 itself. I do have to say I really, really like the look of this card. It's got a gunmetal gray and black shroud, and it's also got enough angular elements to look interesting and kind of out there, but it's not overdone to the point where it just looks silly and childish. It is also worth mentioning though, this is a very, very big card. It measures 307 by 155 by 50 millimeters, so definitely make sure this is gonna fit in your case as it is both very long and very tall. Because it is such a big card, MSI does actually include a little metal brace in the box, so this is obviously to support your card when it's in the case to prevent any sagging and any potential damage to your PCIe slot. So all you need to do is install this bracket underneath the card in the expansion slots underneath the gaming Z, and it should be able to give you that little bit extra support. Moving back to the front of the gaming Z, however, we'll get a look at those two fans. It's interesting that MSI has stuck with just two fans when we're seeing a lot more triple fan cards from the RTX series. These fans are MSI's Torx 3.0, and that means they measure 100 millimeters in diameter, while they also use what MSI calls its dispersion fan blades, which really just means the fan blade design is a bit more curved, and that should help improve airflow although we're gonna to touch on temperatures in just a little bit. Tucked in around these fans, we also find four RGB strips. You can see them lighting up now. I think it looks quite good. Out of the box, it goes through this kind of spectrum cycling look. And there is also another RGB zone on the side of the card, which is the MSI logo. Although if you don't like this, you can of course turn it off. Staying on that front side of the card though, we can again see there's some more GeForce RTX branding, although this is not illuminated. And if you've been following RTX 2070, you will know that there is no NV link or SLI thing or anything like that. So if you buy one 2070, you will not be able to buy another one down the line and use them in SLI. Turning the card over now, we find what I think is a very stylish and good looking backplate. I really do think that the Gaming Z is probably the best looking 
aftermarket RTX card I have seen so far. It's a brushed metal backplate and it is grey, but because it's brushed in two different directions depending on which side of the backplate you look at, that does mean one half looks darker or lighter depending on how the light hits it, which just gives it this two-tone appearance which I think looks really, really stylish. You can also see as well the MSI logo and the little dragon on the right-hand side, but overall I have to say I really, really like this backplate design of the Gaming Z. Elsewhere, we can see that this card requires one 6-pin and one 8-pin PCI power connectors. The Founders Edition 2080 only needs one 8-pin for instance, so that's clearly an extra 6-pin for the Gaming Z. The display outputs have also changed. MSI has gone for three display ports, one HDMI and one USB-C, whereas the Founders Edition 2070 ditches one of those display ports in favor of a DVI port. However, I think MSI has done the sensible thing by bringing back another display port instead of that DVI. Now then, opening up the card is a little Little bit long-winded just because you have to remove 18 screws from the back of the card so it's not complicated it's just a little bit long and once you do that you can actually see there's a metal plate over the VRAM chips. MSI calls this its close quarters heatsink and it essentially provides cooling for the VRAM chips via some thermal pads while it also adds a bit of rigidity to the card because it's screwed into the IO bracket. Once we get that plate off we can get a look at the bare PCB and we can see that MSI has gone for enhanced 8 plus 2 power phase delivery. The Founders Edition 2070 for instance has a 6 phase power delivery for the GPU and one thing I really like is how MSI has incorporated its Dragon logo on the inductors. You're not going to see it unless you take the card apart but I still think it is a very nice touch from MSI. Now the memory comes from Micron, it's 8GB of GDR6 which is is exactly the same as the RTX 2080 and then we can also get a look at the slightly smaller slightly more rectangular GPU die which is the TU106 GPU and we can also see this is labeled 400A and that just means it is a bin chip which Nvidia has allowed its partners to sell with a factory overclock. Looking now at the cooler this is MSI's seventh generation twin frozer design and we can see that it uses six nickel plated copper heat pipes as well as a nickel plated copper base plate which is what the GPU contacts with. There's also another cold plate for the VRM and MOSFETs and of course we also have enough thermal pads for all of those components as well. Moving now on to the card specific testing we're going to start with the average clock speed. This is obviously factory overclocked at 1830 MHz boost However, we actually saw an average 1931 MHz out of the box, which, while we don't have any other comparison data for 2070s yet, is likely to be one of the fastest out-of-the-box boost clocks we will see from a 2070. The Gaming Z managed to do this while only peaking at 68 degrees as well, which makes it one of the coolest running cars we've tested, while it again proved to be one of the quietest cars we've tested, with noise levels not going past 41 decibels. Now, as for power consumption, we do have dedicated sensors in both the PCIe slot as well as the PCIe power connectors, and this lets us measure the power draw of the graphics card itself, so we're not measuring the system as a whole. So we saw the Gaming Z draw just over 228 watts while under load, and this is definitely a bit more than the 185 watts which Nvidia says its RTX 2070 Founders Edition should draw, but then again we do have to remember that the Gaming Z does have a significantly higher boost clock, and the voltage is likely higher as well, so it's certainly nothing to be concerned about. Moving on now to overclocking, we did have limited headroom when it comes to overclocking purely because the Gaming Z does ship with a fairly aggressive factory overclock, so we could only add an extra 40 MHz to the GPU core, although the memory did overclock well as we would expect from GDR6, and we could add an extra 700 MHz to that. This gave us an average operating frequency of 1995 MHz, so very, very close to that 2 GHz mark. And accordingly, we can see that our Fire Strike score rose over a thousand points. And while playing Deus Ex Mankind Divided, as well as Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we did see about a 4 FPS increase while playing those games at 1440p. It is also impressive to see that this overclock resulted in barely any extra noise output, while again, temperatures only barely rose by just 1 degree Celsius. So wrapping things up, we're going to start with the Gaming Z. I have to say MSI's card is very proficient. It is cool, it is quiet, and the factory overclock as well, we saw it run at 1931 MHz out of the box without a hint of an overclock. So that's straight out of the box, and that is a very impressive frequency. With an MSRP of £605, however, 
I think it could be a very tough sell. That's because we've actually found GTX 1080 Ti's for 599, so six pounds less. And although that was just a sale price, the regular price is only 640 pounds. So just 35 pounds more than this Gaming Z 2070. That means if you are willing to spend up to 35 pounds more, you are gonna get a card which is 11% faster on average than the 2070. Of course, that doesn't take into account ray tracing or DLSS, the RTX specific features. However, we still don't know how those features are actually gonna work in games. We've only been able to test demos so far. So we still really don't know just what the RTX series is gonna be like when we actually have ray tracing and DLSS in games you can actually go out and play. However, I do think the RTX 2070 makes more sense at around the 500 pound mark. This would put it up against the GTX 1080 and bear in mind the 2070 is around 10% faster than the 1080. So we would expect that to work in favor of the 2070. We've also been told by Nvidia to expect more cards uh, that have reference clocks being sold at slightly cheaper prices, so we're hoping around the 500 pound mark, but again, until we see those, until we have those cards in hand, we just can't say what they're like. But in a nutshell, we have been reviewing the Gaming Z, and at 605 pounds, I just think pricing does make it hard to recommend over a GTX 1080 Ti, bearing in mind that is around 11% faster. So I'm Dominic Forkit Guru. This has been our review of the MSI RTX 2070 Gaming Z. Please do let us know in the comments what you think. Would you be prepared to get the 2070 instead of a 1080 Ti and perhaps gamble on the RTX features? Or would you just stick with the 1080 Ti as you know it's going to be the faster card? Do let us know down in the comments. You can also hit that subscribe button. We have got plenty more aftermarket RTX cards coming soon. We've got both 2070s, 2080s and 2080 Ti's. So if you don't want to miss that coverage, make sure to hit that bell icon. But until then, I will see you in the next video.